So this evening, I would like to present a very interesting uh, story. Now, this is a story about a watchmaker who we find originating in Switzerland. And this individual, uh, around 1785, we find him in London. And we know that he was in London because we have his family letters to his parents. And that is relayed in this very useful book. This is uh, a book written by Maurice Evard about the travels of Frederic August Montanden, who went from Locla to Brazil. Now, we are not discussing uh, Frederic August today. We are discussing his cousin. Now, fortunately, we do have these family letters. And this uh, individual that we're speaking about today is Henri Louis Montandon, and he was of the same genealogical branch as this Frederic August. This is Montandon Lalong. This is a very illustrious uh, watchmaking branch. And uh, so Henri Louis was born in 1764. Now, we have very few um, written and documentary evidence that uh, is left in the, in the record, genealogical record. However, we do have enough to make a very good picture of his life. Now, we know, uh, according to his letters, that he was in London f from 1785 until probably, uh, he was probably there a maximum of five years. By 1789, we find him uh, surfacing in Vienna, Austria. And this is very interesting. We find a letter to his parents from 1790 where he's discussing the death of the Emperor Joseph II. Now, Henri Louis uh, was uh, apparently he became uh, part of this watchmaker uh, colony. This was a Geneva watchmaker uh, colony in Vienna, Austria. This was part of a project by Emperor Joseph the second. And when the emperor died in 1790, later we'll find that the um, successor was not as interested in this project. However, the idea of this colony, and it did last uh, from 1789 till 1800. So it was an 11 year uh, long colony. And uh, Henry Louis probably left before the end, uh, before the demise. We find the colony, um, winding down basically by about 1794-1795. It starts to ex experience a lot of economic uh, difficulties and this was mainly as a result of the successor emperor who did not support this project. The whole idea behind this project was uh, that they brought this uh, colony of watchmakers from Switzerland. Actually it was called the Constance uh, Watch Factory and it was brought in uh, to Vienna, and they were given a lot of rights, including bringing their families and children, their wives, uh, to this colony, and they were located in a monastery, the uh, Piarist Monastery in Vienna. And the idea was, it was it was in emulation of a project by Frederick the Great of Prussia. Uh, he was quite interested in watchmaking. He wanted to instill this industry in his country, and uh, he brought, uh, under the Huguenot uh, brothers, uh, all these watchmakers um, up into uh, Prussia and Potsdam, Berlin, they had a watch factory there. So Joseph the second of Austria was doing the same thing, uh, trying to encourage his watch production because the uh, local watchmaker scene was quite dire and he was trying to instill this uh, industry in his nation. So they were tasked with making thousands of watches and in the very beginning it seemed quite promising. Now, uh, we do not know exactly when uh, Henri Louis left this colony. Uh, indeed, uh, well, we, for sure he, he was one of the earliest uh, arrivals. We find him there in 1789 uh, from the beginning. Uh, he was in one of like the second group of uh, uh, individuals who uh, moved into the colony. Uh, we do see his letter of 1790. It's most likely that, that uh, by 1792, 1793, a lot of these uh, watchmakers were beginning to leave the colony because the conditions were becoming less and less beneficial to them. And many of these had brought their own watch uh, tools, making 
uh, instruments. And uh, this was also the case we see in uh, the letter to his parents, um, who were very powerful uh, business individuals and connected with the church in Switzerland. Uh, but we, we see him requesting funds uh, to purchase very specialized equipment because the equipment that they were using uh, in place was very bad. In fact, just to carve the um, uh, gears for these watches, uh, you would need to destroy several uh, cogs uh, before you could actually get a decent uh, mo working model with all the teeth intact. So they were very primitive, using very primitive tools. Uh, old English style tools were, were not a very, very good tools. Um, however, after this 1790 letter, we hear nothing of uh, Henri Louis. Now, it's interesting to note that uh, when, when Henri Louis was in London, he had been working both for patrons and independently on his own accounts. And he was also on very good terms with the Jacques, uh, Jacques Droz, who were making uh, androids for the Chinese market. These are very famous. Uh, individuals. It's not exactly clear was he um, in some way connected with their uh, efforts or what were, were uh, his efforts um, towards um, another clientele, perhaps other Swiss families. Maillard days also joined uh, later, but uh, the Le Show were also in London at this time. But this is not exactly clear, but we do know from his letters to his parents that he was working both on his own accounts and for patrons. So, but uh, after London, and when he, we find him in uh, Vienna, uh, he's actually referred to as Heinrich Montanden, and there his title was a uh, Urmacher Gassel, and he was making 100 florins, uh, was this per month, uh, so this is all quite interesting information. Uh, in London, he had extra pocket money. Uh, in Vienna, he was getting by. Uh, however, um, he did equate the situation at the factory to almost slavery. And therefore, we do see that it's probably reasonable that he would have, as the situation become, became more dire, uh, decided to leave this watch colony. Now, after this period, we have no... Uh, concrete information. We do not see him in any of the genealogical records, any official Swiss documents. He just evaporates. Yet, all hope is not lost because uh, in this very time period, we do find mention of a Henry Louis Montenden, who was a watchmaker of the borough in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in, in the United States. And now, this Henry uh, Louis Montenden. He had a wife named Hannah, and his child's name was Albert, and he died in 1802. So this is actually quite interesting. This, um, uh, this we have this information from a book about the watchmakers of Lancaster County, and we can almost be sure that this is the same Henri Louis Montandon or Heinrich Montandon of Vienna. Now, he would have been very uh, skilled at these types of immigrations, obviously. He, he was very uh, mobile and very um, uh, anxious to go out and achieve. And uh, clearly, he had been in business uh, independently and with his collective. Uh, so, uh, but yet, the clincher here, uh, the reason why we're pretty sure that this is the same individual. Now, uh, this book about, and I will provide the uh, specifics, I believe it was published in 1977 by several authors, but this was on the uh, Watch and Clockmakers of Lancaster County. It mentions that of uh, these young, early American watchmakers, we know of three watchmakers who died quite young, between the ages of 35 and 40, and one of them is this Henry Louis, or uh, Henry Louis, as he's called there. Now, this, our Henry Louis, or Heinrich, of London and Vienna, was born in 1764. So this would make him, in 1802, this would make him uh, 37 or 38 years old, which is exactly, and we know this from the hospital records, according to the book. So we can be very certain that there can be very few 
uh, Henri Louis or Henry Louis uh, Montandon watchmakers who would have had the expertise to be, because we do see um, a list of all the uh, equipment that was passed on to the wife, Hannah, when he died. And there were uh, many uh, clocks and watches and all kinds of equipment. This must be the same individual. There can be no other individual. Um, and obviously he spoke English. Uh, and Hana, this is a name, this could have been somebody he met in London or in Vienna, or it could be a, a Swiss individual, his wife. We do not know uh, anything of her background. Now, later, she herself, after the death of her husband, would, she would later form a partnership with one of the, I believe he was somebody that worked with them, a uh, an individual that uh, this was later they termed their uh, company Montanen and Roberts. And so they were working together. The son, Albert, also later, he continue, continued in watchmaking, and he went uh, to an entirely different location in the Midwest. However, um, we see them in the uh, first uh, quarter to three decades, at least, uh, of the early 19th century, working in this line. However, it's because of this uh, very early death age uh, that we must be speaking of the same individual. This is... Uh, Henri uh, Louis Montandon La Longue. And this is quite interesting because this gives us a very intrepid um, picture of this man's lifestyle who went from Switzerland to London, then to Vienna, and then finally to America. And he seems to have been very energetic and achieved a lot of uh, great things in such a short lifespan. But this was a note for the record about this traveling a uh, young watchmaker uh, who has a very common name, Henri Louis. We do have two other Henri Louis. One went to Copenhagen. We know exactly what happened with him, and he died in 1865. Uh, but he would have been a later generation. He was uh, born only around 1789. So, and the other Henri Louis was a Montaigne de Travers who went to Besançon and later probably worked with Montaigne first to some extent. Uh, however, he established himself in business uh, in Besançon after departing Switzerland in 1850. So we, this is uh, the, a different Henri Louis and uh, the earliest, but this is very interesting and this is just a note for the record. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.